So what I've done so far is I've basically done a, a layer of two or three blues and some white or grey in here. And then I went on with um, this zest it and I've blended it all down. Now I'm putting another layer on because it looked a bit patchy like this. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but it was a bit patchy. So basically I'm just putting another layer on. Um, I mean, basically I'm experimenting. This is the first time I've sort of really done this. Um, so I'm experimenting with putting thicker layers on. Um, but I'm putting them on lightly. Um, and I'm overlapping the darker areas with the lighter areas. You can see where I've put the sails in underneath in white. Um, I'm not really sure whether I'm going to regret that, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm pretty sure I'll get away with it. But what I'm trying to do now is put an extra thicker layer on in the hope that it gets rid of all that texture that I can see underneath um, because it's not um, fitting to the picture. So I'm putting an extra layer of wax on. I'm going to blend it down again. Um, as I say, it's kind of all experimentation at the moment. Um, and we'll see where it takes us. So I'm sure it'll be fine. Just a case of putting enough wax on. Uh, not that I didn't put enough on in the first place, because I did. I put plenty on. But, uh, you know, we'll see where we go with it. It's all an experiment. Uh, the next... Uh, hardest thing is going to be getting on the white details when I need them um, but we'll see I'm sure we'll overcome it you know given the experience um, I hope I've had uh, I'll be able to overcome these um, problems if you want to call them problems uh, I'm going around the actual uh, main parts of the sails to save them a bit but uh, just adding on more, blending in some different blues. It's actually on top of the blended um, oil pastel. These are, I mean, they're like lipstick to begin with, but these are actually going on absolutely superbly. Um, it's quite a nice, uh, quite, quite a nice feeling actually. I quite like it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put... Um, Actually, I'm going to come down a bit further with this blue and then I'm going to add some white over the top of that to try and blend it in together to get a light blue down the bottom. Um, I tried to put it on in just white, but that didn't actually work like I hoped it would work. So I'm going to put some of that on there. I'm going to get a white sennelier, blend that into that blue right up to the windmill. And then we're going to get our mineral spirit and blend that in as well. Um, I was watching, um, I think it was Cherry's Art Rama on YouTube last night, and uh, the lady on there, um, and uh, she was doing some stuff with oil pastels. They were the Mungia oil pastels, and I have to say, I was quite impressed with what she was telling me, and that's kind of what's well, kind of prompted some of this this morning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a cotton bud and I'm going to blend from the lighter area up into the darker areas just like I would with a soft pastel. I know if you remember seeing my soft pastel videos I do three strips of blue and then I just blend upwards into them with my fingers but with this on this case because it's this oil pastel I'm kind of haven't used the cotton bud. So at the moment I'm just doing quick small circles, getting what I hope will be a nice sky colour, blending it in gently. I'm not pressing hard by the way, not pressing hard at all, just blending it all in, getting it all to mix and every now and then I'll just go back over and just straight lines like this and come down and smooth it down and that's actually looking really nice now. Um, I wonder, I don't think I could have got it looking like that had I not blended with Mineral Spirits the first layers. Um, I mean, I have done vast areas in oil pastel. Um, there was a, I'll probably post it on the end of this video, but there was a, a girl drawing I did and I'd done a sort of burgundy looking background. And that was quite a vast area, but I've got to say, I don't think it was as smooth as this. This is nice and thick now. Nice and thick and smooth now. Just go backwards and forwards. 
Don't worry about things like that, a little bit of white all adds to the feeling of reality, if that's what you want to call it. Try not to get the darker blue down here if you can, so every now and then perhaps turn the cotton bud, um, just to try and get a nice clean area on which to blend. So look at that, that's looking really lovely now. I'm just going to blend in between the sails, doing exactly the same thing, small circles, and I mean small, blend it up into the dark, come back down again, so it has a, a gradual um, and uh, soft transition from dark to light, and then go backwards and forwards. Right, so again here, do exactly the same. I'm going to get a clean piece now, because you can see I've got blue on that cotton bud. So to come down into the white, I'm going to get a clean surface. You probably go through quite a few cotton buds doing this. See, i got some dark blue down there, and I'm trying to kind of eradicate that. Um, whether that will work or not, I don't know, but in the context of the picture, it's probably not going to be noticed, but we'll see. I'm sure I'll find a way eventually. Oh, I've got a bit of blue down there. Oh, that looks quite nice, actually. Looks like a nice horizon. Some of this will be covered up by uh, trees and foliage, dark foliage over the top of it anyway. So, so I'm just blending small circles up into the top and then coming down to blend the two edges of the dark and the light together. I've actually seen a guy, um, I have to say my favourite pastel, uh, sorry diverting a bit, my favourite oil pastel artist is, uh, I think they call him Wunemo. I love how he does his oil pastels. I would never ever be able to do my oil pastels like that. It's because it's just not my style. But it doesn't mean I can't appreciate and love what he does. Um, but what I was going to say was, I've actually seen a guy, and he's actually local to me. Um, and he's the only really other oil pa pastel artist I know. But he does scenes like this. Really full-fledged scenes that look like oil paintings and uh, they are they, they are spectacular has to be said right so I'm going to get my brush now the one thing I'm going to have to do is to make sure they go from the light to the dark so I'm going to get a little bit of zest it right I'm loading my brush dabbing it in the little bit of zest that I've got and then I'm going to just touch it off on the on the tissue and I'm just going to go backwards and forwards. Now you might not be able to see a lot changing on the camera but believe me this is now turning into a um, liquid and uh, smoothing everything out. I still think I'm going to be ending up with a little bit of that texture there but I think what I will do is I will leave this as the last bit of blending I will do. Oh, got a run going on there, don't want that. Don't want too much zest that you see. I just want to go backwards and forwards. Smoothing it out. I guess that is the first time I've ever done this. So you can see as I'm overlapping where the trees are going to be and the trees are going to overlap that. Getting a nice soft transition. Right, I'm just going to do this bottom bit. Not too much zest it. Breaks the oil pastel down. And then go upwards. Oh, I need a little bit more. You'll know when you've run out of zest it because it'll get sticky again. And go upwards. Right across. And back down. Clean the brush. And then just mix it in. Very gently. Don't need to push hard, don't need to scrub hard. The brush you use um, needs to have, um, I'd say, probably the smoothest toothbrush you could ever imagine texture. Uh, 
I'm pretty sure that on another day, on another video, in another state of time, I'm going to get this even better than this. But like I say, it's the first one, so. But you can see. Right, now what I did last time when I was off the camera was I did this, and then I got the tissue that I was using. This has got zest on it, doesn't matter. And then start from the bottom, just smooth it along. That will dry it off slightly, but what that will also do is that will smooth everything out. All right, and the zest it that you've got on the tissue will also help. Right, that's quite smooth. It's not perfect. But what would you expect for a first time effort? So I'm going to leave that to dry and then uh, when that's dry I'll come back uh, I'll clean my brush off and resist it obviously uh, clean on the tissue um, and when it's dry I'll come back and then maybe I'll start looking to build up some of these other areas uh, maybe put a few clouds in I'll see how the oil pastel will go over the top of the two sets of blended by mineral oil uh, by mineral spirits oil pastel and uh, we'll see where we are yeah I'll let you know what I'm doing anyway catch you in the back in a minute okay so as you can see I have got on a little bit with this um, so I laid some layers of blues on here blended them in with mineral spirits I then did that again and then wherever I wanted to I laid pure um, oil pastel sorry I'm just wiping off some grubby marks I saw anyway and and I kept building that up now for the windmill what I've started to do is to just lay in colors where they need to be um, I started with the light color the grays and then progressed through to the blacks from a, a sort of smoky dusky gray to a black to get that three tone dimension and then I've kind of added a little bit of blue in there I may add in a little bit of a uh, yellow ochre type colour into the uh, highlights here just to make it look as if the sun's shining now here I um, basically um, put in a background of white and then put in some grey and you can't put it in specifically like this you have to mould and blend it to that so I've used a, um, a tortillion, or tortillion, whatever you call them, okay. I found that was probably going to be a bit better because they get into smaller areas than um, blending stumps. So, um, you know, just basically manipulated it and blended it. But what I'm finding is it's actually quite difficult to put the white pastel over the top of these um, slightly darker colours and to get a nice crisp line. So um, I, I try to be a bit of a purist if I can and I don't like to mix mediums overly wherever I can but I think in this case I'm going to have to actually use a pencil just to line the shadow areas and make that will make this stand out a bit more and I'll try and get a bit more intense with the white and I'll just keep manipulating and working at it but of course adding white adding in the dark and then wherever I need it adding in colors so I'll, I'll probably mold this with a pencil rather than than anything else um, possibly I may go to a rubber shaper uh, sorry rubber color shaper which is uh, one of these um, and I'll add in color and if I don't quite get the intensity that I like then um, I'm gonna have to think about something else so that may be that uh, possibly melting a bit of oil pastel and adding that into there with maybe a color shape I don't know I'm just thinking out loud at the moment but uh, I'm not in a position where I can scrape the blue away and get the nice bright white on this particular bit and uh, in all honesty that is exceptionally detailed for a oil pastel picture so I'm not going to beat myself up about it I'm going to get the look that I need in all honesty the the windmill is uh, yes it's a centerpiece of the picture but at the same time it's also in the background 
Um, and there's going to be a gate here and loads of bushes up around here if I can get it right. And uh, we'll keep working on and ploughing on that way. Um, so I'm kind of nearly finished with the mill, other than trying to get these um, windmill sails correct. Uh, you may have noticed vaguely that, that I'll end up getting sort of some dirty, that's where I've been leaning, dirty patches. That's not a problem. Um, because the oil pastel has actually dried better by adding mineral spirits to it, you can kind of do what you like with it. Whereas this would smear, this actually now doesn't. Um, so that's kind of a good thing because that means you can add lots more pastel on top by using mineral spirits at the bottom. So for example, I can just add in a cloud there if I wanted, cover up some misdemeanors, whatever it may be, and just get a little bit of a colour into the sky, blend it in cover up dirty patches wherever I want I can do that in blue white whatever I can just you know keep manipulating it and moving things to wherever I like and if I wanted a bigger cloud up here I just don't blend it quite as much and uh, let the pastel do the talking so there we go um, I'm gonna keep moving on with that I'll probably video some of this as I'm going along um, and then when I start adding the trees in, I'm just going to work at it and uh, hopefully it'll come right. Um, one of the hardest parts to do again was this win window. Um, I didn't put a background or under layer of white in quite the place where I needed it. So I had to move it along a bit, which was quite hard. But like I say, it's a, it's a background object. So that's not really going to make that much difference. Um, and I just basically put in dots wherever they needed to be and sufficient amount the same with up here you'll find that these dots actually um, will help to line this part of the sail but we will be lining that anyway so with a pencil and then I'll be adding in colour so it'll give it a look when when specifically I need it um, and that's probably the next bit I'm going to work on before putting a little bit of a plan in place for um, the background trees I'll say the back foreground trees so you can see I'm using this rubber shaper just to blend everything out. What I have found actually is, um, and, and it, it's not a new thing, but uh, when you put this pastel on and you use the mineral spirits, it, it dries it up. And it, like I say, it makes it so you uh, can add layers on top. But when you put pure oil pastel on, it stays... Um, alive, wet, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't completely dry out. But there is a certain amount of drying that goes on. And this oil pastel becomes more and more tacky overnight. So when you put it on, it's really quite tacky and you can move it about a lot. But then there's a certain amount and element of drying go on. And it becomes harder to blend. Well, that actually helps to some degree because you can go back the next day and things where you weren't quite getting them because they weren't quite going as you want them you've now got a little bit more control because the oil pastel has dried out slightly and uh, if you aren't getting what you want you can then go back in with the mineral spirits I might actually go in with the mineral spirits to add another layer of white onto the top of this it, I'm kind of um, I'm not guessing I'm taking educated guesses based on experience as to what I think might work. So, like I say, if I use, say, this colour shaper, I could put in some mirror spirits and dry this out and blend this down. That will then dry that out. I can then go on top with more white. Um, a bit like a fixative in soft pastels. You spray a bit fixative on soft pastels, you've then got a little bit more tooth. So, I'll see if that'll work. I'll, you know, I'm experimenting um, but at the same time trying to work out a good picture and I think that's really all you do in any picture you do is that uh, yes you know all these things and you have an idea about all these things but you literally do have to start again every time um, but with a little bit more knowledge and a little bit more of a base so I will um, continue with this I'll keep adding to the video and then eventually, all being well, we're going to end up with a finished picture. 
So uh, I'll carry on from there. What I'm doing now is um, marking in where any foliage is going to go. So in this case, trees. I'm just marking them in and get some idea of where I'm going to then block in. So I'm doing this by dabbing. Um, I don't really need to do anything more than that at this point until I start refining it. As long as I get the shape correct, we're away. That's to be the highest point. This will be all the nice um, foliage that sticks over the um, background sky, you know, the nice dark foliage that trees give that pushes everything back. And then I need to come down here. This is where a different bush forms. I'm blocking that one in a bit. Comes around here. Comes around here, something like that. As I say, it's just blocking in. That foliage comes around there. Giving myself an idea of where I'm going with it. This foliage comes around here. That's the real foreground foliage. And then we have some foliage that will be coming over here. All this will end up with highlights on it. The bottom of that windmill needs to come down slightly, so I need to block that in black again. Um, we have some houses here, and we have a bush that comes at the background of it. So that's that. Try not to go over the houses. As I say, I'm blocking them in very, very lightly because... Uh, I want to make sure that I go where I need to go with these. There's a house here, and there is loads of foliage behind that house, which comes over here. There's the shape of the roof, comes over there. Um, the roof and the foliage meet each other here, and then this rises slightly where this house is there. And rises slightly there. So uh, I've got an idea of where I'm going now. And uh, I will undoubtedly be blocking most of this in with a mid tone, or dark to mid tone, I should say. And then I'll be darkening up areas of it for the real depths of the bush. And then um, from there. I'll probably use mineral spirits on that for the real depths. From there I will um, then add detailed foliage on top. If this comes out how I want it to come out, this will be quite quite detailed and there'll be quite a lot in it. But that's what I want, so quite happy with that. That bush comes up over there. Um, there's a gate post here, foliage is all around that. This looks very complicated perhaps, but believe me it isn't, I'm just marking in areas. That needs to be quite a dark area in there, quite a dark area in here, so the fence post will stick out. Um, that'll get darker down here. I'm working from my own reference by the way, this is a mill up near where I live. This will be quite dark in here. As I say, this is all... I'm not going to go too much further down than that for the moment, but I've got some idea. Of
you can see here I've made the bush miles too big so I'm cutting round here with the palette knife to make it a better size so I'm getting rid of everything that's on top and the bottom will be left and I can either colour over that or I can leave it or yeah, I can probably use it to my advantage my head. I suppose in theory I've overdone it which is easy to do in oil pastels especially when you're doing a picture like this so I'm getting rid of everything I don't want or I need to improve on and I'll just go over the top of it it's a pain causes a lot of work but sometimes it has to be done kind of getting rid of um, quite a substantial bit of the picture really which is annoying one thing you just need to do is be careful you don't ruin your paper so, just been having a good bit of a go at the tree not easy lots of stippling It'll get there. Guess we're going to put all that on. And then somewhere along the line, we're going to choose a colour. Not sure what colour it is, but I'll have a look at this one at the moment. We're just going to put a couple of highlights here and there, just to change the colour up a bit. Make the highlights look as if they've got a highlight, if you see what I mean. This is where it becomes difficult, because you have to keep cleaning the pastel, otherwise the colour won't come off and the colour won't adhere. Again, lots of stippling. And you have to make it look right as well. Um, that's probably one of the hardest parts is the fact that you need highlights and areas crossing over darker areas where they have to look right. If they don't look right, they just look like a bunch of mixed up colour doing nothing. Occasionally put a nice little one on its own that goes out into the blue of the sky. Just gives it a bit of brightness. And then somewhere along the line, I would be likely perhaps to add in a little bit of a terracotta type colour just to give it a little bit of a break here and there. Break up the colours. Not necessarily all the time, and not necessarily too much of it because otherwise it, won't look it will look distracting. Um, and what you can do is then you can just colour up over the top of that as well. So you end up with different tones and different colours. Lots of stickers. And then you can end up putting little bits that come up over top of dark areas. Little just little what look like leaves. If you don't like them you can always remove them. Like this, but if I go bright, 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 bright up into there, it looks as if the the branches are sort of going up into that dark area or in front of that dark area. Yeah. Use the dark areas and the light areas to segregate areas of branch. Right now, I will carry on like that. Um, for quite a while so 
when I get to the point where I think I've done enough I shall come back and show you what's happened put the branches in and then you put slightly lighter colour over the top of the branches just to look like there's leaves over the top there oh sorry the trunk I should say not the branches same with the black areas you know, black and mid-tone and lights showing anyway I'll come back later and show you where I've got to
I'm not 